Thank you, Chris. Uh, now we turn more to the science, and who better than eminent climatologist Pat Michaels. If you've been at the, the conference since yesterday, you saw Pat's outstanding presentation. But Pat is one of those people the media love to take little digs at. NBC's Ann Thompson went so far to call him proudly a denier about climate change. That both misstates Pat's position and makes very unsubtle criticism by using the loaded word denier. In our study, we found a paltry 37 people expressing any sort of disagreement with global warming dogma in six months of network TV. Of those, only seven were scientists like Pat. That's a great loss. I've watched him on TV. I've seen him in person. He even came to our office to give some very specific explanations of things. Take it from me, the media would be wiser if they paid more attention. But actually, don't take it from me, because I'm not Ann Thompson, and I don't put words in this man's mouth. Let him do it. Thank you. Like most diseases, bias is a presentation of global warming as multifactorial. It's not simply that the Society for Environmental Journalists clearly uh, is on a mistake. I have looked at the publications, outside publications from members of the Society. They're clearly biased in one direction. That's fine. I don't mind that. It's also true that the information stream that they receive is biased, and I'm going to test the base, please. <laughs> Control B. There we go. I'm going to test how good your eyes are here <laughs> uh, by doing a slideshow. Slideshow. Yeah, slideshow. What do you mean left? <laughs> it's what Al Gore used in his head. <laughs> okay, thank you. Now, many of you have seen this picture before. It was the first year that the satellite was taking readings of polar ice. Obviously, the image really doesn't look like this. It's a bunch of ones and zeros that come out of a computer, and we supply the geography, and it's all very, very clever. Now. I know I have to speak into the microphone. I will speak into the microphone as soon as I can because I don't have a laser pointer. I'd like to ask you the question, is the information stream that the media receives, accepting the fact that people go into environmental journalism for the same reason that doctors go into medicine. Doctors go into medicine because they have feelings about human health and welfare. And people go into environmental journalism because they have feelings about the environment, okay? It's real. I don't, that doesn't bother me. But what does bother me is when our federal agencies inject their feelings about the environment. Now, I don't know how good your eyes are back there, but I can get somebody up here to look at this screen. This is a very famous image. A very famous image. Our chief ice You'll follow my finger. You'll notice the ice is rather mottled here. Uh, great. You'll notice. You'll notice the ice. <laughs> but now it's on, correct? You notice the ice is rather mottled here, M-O-T-T-L-E-D, as opposed to mottled. Now, if you follow my finger, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, you'll notice that it's all remarked. Oh, where did that come from? <laughs> Who's got it? It's a heckler. Wow. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give him the five minutes, Dan. Well, we got to win the lottery ticket. That's what we're doing. <laughs> all right. Okay. So you can see this. Take a close look, ladies and gentlemen. 
Take, take, take a close look, if you would. You see that? That's photoshopped. That's what? not real data. What? Why is that photoshopped? Because the satellite couldn't see up to that point. Now, usually when a scientist doesn't have data in the model, he'll put in some crosshatching and say, no data. In this case, we painted it dead white. And you can only find out about this on about page 35 of a document from the National Snow and Ice Data Center. Or, as I said last night, this record begins in 1979. Uh, the ice would have to be at its lowest value because for several years, which was in the summer, these are the coldest temperatures back to 1923 or so. And that is at the end of a long cold period. So it's not surprising that it went away. And finally, the temperatures that we see now, which have induced a substantial recession of the ice at the end of summer here in the Eurasian Arctic, had to have been common for millennia in the period from about seven to 10,000 years ago, as inferred from fossil tree records. So it's not just the journalists. It's the science itself that is colored. Nobody bothered to mention in these reports <coughs> about how warm it had to be here back then, meaning that there was no ice. And as I mentioned last night, I want to expand upon this. The information stream itself is biased. Uh, why is global warming news always bad? Well, my scientist friends believe that every piece of global warming news has an equal probability of saying it's worse than we thought or it's not as bad as we thought. Anybody who's an economist here is saying, that can't be. That's just not the way it works. There's something that's been, been studied for years. It's called publication bias. And it's the fact that we only submit articles that say that something is happening. If something isn't happening, it's left in the file drawer. It's called the file drawer effect, and it's been studied many, many times. In biomedicine, if you do a study of many studies called a meta-analysis, there are actual statistical corrections that you're supposed to use for the file drawer effect. But my profession tells the Supreme Court, no, that's not true. It is equally, just as possible that environmental and health damages will be more severe or not as severe. And this is what I tested, and I want to make sure that you understand this. Looking at 13 months of science in nature, I took the articles that, that were on global warming, classified them as it's worse than we thought, it's not as bad as we thought, or it's neutral. And the prediction should have an equal probability uh, of being less, uh, worse, worse than we thought, or not as bad as we thought. The results, these, this is the important part here. There were 115 articles, nine were not as bad as we thought, 83 were worse than we thought. Now remember, because my profession is asserting that the probability of a new piece of research saying it's not as bad as we thought, or it's worse than we thought, is equal. That's the same as flipping a coin. So you can go to a binomial probability table and flip a coin 92 times in the computer and find out how many times you'll have to run that realization of 92 flips before you'll get only nine or fewer heads or tails. And the answer is about uh, 10 followed by 16 zeros in time. So, in fact, it is a biased literature. And that doesn't help. It's adding a biased literature onto a crusading reporting population. Here's an example of what that can do. This is hurricanes and global warming. Uh, and this is, this is really quite remarkable. You can see the strength of hurricanes going up. Uh, of course, the salacious undergraduate in the back says, Dr. Michael, you forgot to label your y-axis. You're right. This is not the strength of hurricanes and global warming. It's the number of news stories appearing every month <laughs> saying that hurricanes are getting stronger because of global warming. And those of you who don't believe that the censored James E. Hansen from NASA right down the road here on Broadway uh, started all this with his congressional testimony on June 23rd, 1988, ought to trace these things backwards because there's June 1988. It started right there. He started it, and he's being censored. This is the Atlantic Tropical Storm and Hurricane Activity. Here's the unreported news. Uh, this goes back to 1930. And uh, here's 2005. That's the very, very big year of 2005. Uh, if 
people had looked in the literature, they would say, hmm, this 1930 looks like it could be just as big. Why? First of all, because, whoa, sorry, there we go. Because we didn't have satellites to detect these things out here in 1930. We didn't have Hurricane Hunter aircraft. This is the 1930 season right here, and you can see this incredible number of hurricanes here in the Gulf, uh, the Caribbean, and the Western Atlantic, where we had coverage. If we had coverage back here in 1930, it's not, would not be at all surprising that 1930 would have exceeded the maximum uh, that we eventually saw in 2005. Uh, on hurricanes, I'd just like to point out, never seems to appear in the news stories, this is the frequency of category four and five hurricanes, the very severe ones. I haven't seen a news story yet that says that the frequency of strong storms in the Western Pacific and in the North Atlantic was the same as it is now in the period from the 1950s to the 1960s. That's before it warmed up. So you get the idea. There's a lot of reporting on this that, that, that uh, A, is not reported, or B, comes from the biased reporting stream. Now, I'd like to give you a few personal experiences just to tell you what a horror show it really is like. Uh, <coughs> the Ann Thompson piece, where I was called the denier, was filmed, was, was videoed at the green room at the Cato Institute. And you can talk to the Cato media people. We thought it was one of the fairest interviews ever conducted. It went on for about 15 minutes. I said, that guy who did that is really, really good. What came on was one spliced sentence that clearly was not at all what I intended to say on the report. Uh, the same thing happens with, uh, with Keith Olbermann. He'll, uh, he'll invite you onto his program and then discourteously disinvite you as soon as he's told not to do it. My best experience with television, though, has to do with Aaron Brown on Newsnight, who had me on as a UVA uplink, and it was just a really good show. I get, I get, I get along with these people. You know, I'm, personally, I'm probably a little hard to get along with, but somehow dealing with a camera, uh, maybe it's the impersonal nature of it, I can do this. And it was a great show, and Brown went around CNN the next day and said, we have got to have this guy on. He, he can explain science anybody. It was really, really good, and he wasn't crazy and all that good stuff. A letter went from Peter Dykstra, and it was an email around CNN uh, saying something to the effect that Michaels has been funded by industry, sort of like Armstrong Williams. And the last sentences were, I, I don't want to be held exactly responsible because I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it said, avoid, do not use. The last I heard, that's called blackballing a source. So yes, it happens. Uh, and we can have we can have a lot of discussion about this as to why it occurs. I think it's it's uh, you, you want to talk about guy got censored. It's not the guy from Hall from Broadway. It's the other one. 